Welcome back guys, my name is Matt. You're watching Demo RPG Episode 15. We're writing a C++ uh, RPG library from scratch. Sort of top-down old... no, nah, it doesn't necessarily need to be top-down. Just old school systems like Final Fantasy style and D&D and stuff. And uh, yeah, this episode we're gonna work on monsters, but first I've done a ton of just uh, off-episode stuff. So there's gonna be an update. I'll leave a link to it down below. That's basically going to be like 14.5 or something, or episode 14.5. Because I did a ton of work refactoring, but I didn't want to make that an episode on its own. Because we only have six episodes left. I know, can you believe it? But if I get like ten new patrons before the end of the series, I'll do a few more bonus episodes. So consider signing up on Patreon to help support these, as they don't particularly do super well on YouTube in general. And it makes it hard for me to uh, basically determine that it's worth my time to do these. So... It does rely on the community support some, but I am committed to doing at least 20 no matter what. That being said, let's go over the changes that happened in between last episode and this episode. I'm not going to talk about every single one because they're just too huge, but basically we took every single .h file from over here and turned it into or gave it an associated .cpp. So let's just look at one as an example. Let's check out buff here. Now there's only definitions here. Basically, this since this is now a library, we don't want the definitions in the .h. So we look at the associated buff file. And you'll notice all the headers that could be used by the end user are in this include demo RPG. And everything else is flat. And that's because, uh, yeah, we don't want them including the definitions. The definitions are part of the .live. That's just how the library works. They only need to know about the function names. All right, so if we look at buff, we'll see all the definitions are in there. And that's true down the line for basically any of these. If you look at them, it's now no definitions here. Oh, there's one here actually we missed. So there's a little thing that we could correct. So feel free to correct that if you want. I'm not gonna do it right now because we're moving on and it seems to compile fine. Uh, yeah, the item, if we go to item, we'll see we got, well, that's I guess not a great case, but everything else is fine. We also pulled out armor, potion, uh, weapon, uh, all the items we did separate out of uh, the item class itself. The item class itself is just the delegates basically and the final item that you actually use. So that changes things. Same with the classes, all the player character classes. Well, the main uh, include of just player character has the delegate and the one you instantiate. But all these subclasses of rogue and everything are all on their own. And that's just so we can easily modify them as we go. Because these are going to include all the level up code and class trees. But otherwise, still mostly the same. And now let's look at one last thing that I want to talk about here as far as changes. And that is I have added a lot of uh, whatever these are called. Qualifiers, I guess, I think is what they're called to uh, functions. So a lot of them have no discard, which basically means, hey, if you're using one of these getters, you actually have to be doing something with the value. Otherwise, it's going to throw you a warning, potentially an error on your compiler. And that's just so no one's calling get level and then just not doing anything with the actual level it returns because why are you calling get level? So just a way to help us code later to get more warnings and stuff if we're doing something wrong. Also added a lot of const and no except. Uh, no except basically tells the compiler that this cannot throw an exception, which helps it optimize things. So that's good. And const is basically to help us down the line to make sure, well, the const on this left side says you cannot modify this type it's returning. So don't modify it. And if you do, it's going to throw an error. And this one on the right side means it can't change anything in the class. Well, if it's a getter, it shouldn't be changing anything in the class. So that makes sense. So we added a whole bunch of those down the line just for everything. It's pretty straightforward. All these getters are going to be no discard const and const no accept uh, like 90% of the time. And that's just going to help a lot of efficiency in coding. And you'll notice I capitalized all the public functions. I'm trying to stay consistent with that. I may have missed a few. You're welcome to make pull requests and fix any of those I missed and get some GitHub points if you want. And also in general for private members, I started them with underscore and uh, just left all lowercase with underscores in between words uh, just to make it clear that they're private if we're accessing them in the item manager or something. So I tried to go through every class and do that in general. As you'll see, it looks the same here. And uh, yeah, I moved HP, MP abilities, and buffs into the player character delegate slash stat block because 
well, it seemed to be the place for it, and as we get to making some monsters, we're going to decide if we use this player character delegate for monsters or not. I'm thinking right now that I'm not going to, because we just want to keep monsters really simple. We got to decide if we want them to level up and stuff. But anyway, that's the main changes that we're starting from. So I'm going to leave the, the starting link if you want to start from here for today for what we're doing. And that way you can actually code along because there's just a bunch of stuff that wasn't in episodes. So just a reminder to uh, hit like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see me live coding or gaming, head over to my Twitch. Check me out over there. If you have Twitch Prime, you can uh, give me a free sub and it helps me out. So there are free ways to support the channel. And uh, yeah, the thing with Patreon stands too. If I get 10 new members before the end of this, I will extend it a few episodes. Uh, basically, I'll go to episode 22. All right. And with that out of the way, let's get on to monsters. Oh, sorry. One last thing I want to mention. Yes, we are going to move on to monsters. But what made this all very possible was that we have a bunch of tests. So yeah, I wrote a bunch more tests too. So I totally forgot to mention that. But yeah, having all these tests, and if we go look at any of them in particular, you can see exactly what they do. Uh, basically, we're checking the first two levels of every class to make sure it gets everything it's supposed to get, and some ar armor and items and stuff, and equip player, and uh, making sure the backpack works. There's a change to the backpack too, where if you try to equip a potion, it puts it into your inventory. Uh, you can equip armor and stuff directly, but if you try it, you know, it's still going to swap to your inventory. So inventory still needs a little bit of work, but we'll be updating that. Basically, all these functions are going to have to keep the player inventory in mind, or whatever inventory you're pulling from, so that it can update the chest or inventory or whatever you're digging out of. So uh, yeah, m these changes were a lot easier thanks to having both an IDE that helps along with it because hey say you want to change this function you just control RR do the check everything that should change do okay and give it a new name level care up for example if you just want to change the name of something you can do that apply it across everything uh, run your test to make sure it took and bam we can see it work correctly so yeah, refactoring is a lot easier with a good IDE is what I'm saying. Uh, it becomes a nightmare if you're using a plain text editor and you want to change things throughout the thing. But also, I should mention that sometimes this doesn't do it perfectly. Sometimes you go to change something and it totally messes up and doesn't get certain things. So just keep all that in mind. It changed it here, changed it everywhere basically. Yeah, so tests are a big deal. And uh, once we get these monsters in here, we're going to have them fight some players via some tests. All right, now for real. So yeah, download this starting code and then we'll get into it. All right, on to monsters. How are we going to do monsters? Now, let's keep it really simple because, of course, we could get super complicated, give all kinds of varying abilities and rotations and stuff. But for now, we're just going to keep it super simple and basically just make a monster class. And all they're really going to do is have HP and an attack. So let's just keep it really that simple. So we're going to have public, private. And if you missed what I did there, I basically just uh, right clicked on this and went to add new class or new item. Chose class and then gave it a name and that should make uh, the starter.h and .cpp. So uh, let's find where it put it. It usually puts these on the root level. We actually want the dot h to be in the include over here. Let's go ahead and move that. Make sure we hit save on those in the CPP here. And there we go. And we're good there. So what are we going to have publicly and privately here? Let's see. Well, we want a constructor. Oh, it's, it didn't capitalize it. So we need to do that. And we need to do it over here too. All right, so a monster is definitely going to have HP. Let's go ahead and include types. We're going to use those. Let's also go ahead and include point well. We're going to use that for HP. And I think that's really all we need for now, since we're just going to keep it really, really simple. So let's make a unique pointer of the point well. And actually, this can be public because the way the way this class is made, unique pointer point well uh, HP 
So let's go ahead and include memory. Yeah, because uh, HP is the way it is, where uh, it's a class of its own and it can't be modified except through its functions. Uh, yeah, the current fullness and max well are... Max well sounds funny, but uh, it should probably just be max. The current and max should be... You know what? Let's just go ahead and hot edit these, just as a little practice. Uh, it is a, let's just change this to current using our refactor button. Well, let's change this one to max. And that should update across all the code everywhere, and we're good. So yeah, even if we have public access to the HP, we still can't directly modify its max and current. We have to use these functions for getting and setting. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just the way we have it designed. So that's, that's kind of interesting. All right, so we got our HP. What else does a monster need? Well, it probably needs an attack. And uh, we can just make that however we want. Do we want it to be const, or do we want it to be able to be modified? Do we want them to be able to get buffs? Well, these are things we can decide later. For now, let's just have a UN32. Well, we can go damage type. Do we have damage type? Yeah, min damage. You know, we could do a min and a max, but then we'd have to bring in randomization. And we're actually going to bring in some randomization for this episode. Um, yeah, but for right now, yeah, let's do it. Min and max is fine. So damage type, min damage. And uh, I guess we could just do it like this, max damage. And we could make those private since we don't want people modifying them. And let's go no discard, uh, damage type, get min damage, const no accept. And let's do the same thing for max. And we could have setters too, but let's just say that they have to specify in here. Uh, well type HP and then damage type uh, min and damage type max. So now they just have to use this constructor to make a monster. We could even delete all the other ones. Like we can go monster, oof, delete, and we could do the other ones too. We go monster, uh, const monster reference equals delete. I think that's right. And this other one with uh, double reference. Also delete. Copy and move constructors. Get rid of those. Are there others we need to get rid of? I can't remember. Maybe. But now we just need to make these functions. And we want these functions to be in the CP class. So I'm just going to use some help here in alt enter while hovering over, hovering over it and we get a create definition option sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it basically starts putting some code here in this monster.cpp uh, brings it up in a little shortcut here it's just a visual studio thing but basically we know what we want to do we just want to go hp equals new or uh, standard make unique rather because it's hp is a unique pointer why does this need to be a unique pointer it doesn't honestly it doesn't you know, in this case, did we have a reason for it before? I don't, we did, but I don't remember what it was. All right, so let's just not make it one in this case. That's that's fine. It's still going to have the same rules from its class. It's just going to make it a little easier to do this sort of thing. Actually, we can even uh, just construct them like so. And go uh, min damage min max damage max and bring these brackets up here. Hit our formatting key. See if it's happy. Seems happy. I don't know why this one isn't. Oh, it's because HP does. Oh yeah, it wants a. Uh, it wants the min and max. So we want to start the monster at full hit points. That's just the way our class is. You got to pass it twice because if we go look at it, just address this real quick. The constructor, you either give it a blank constructor, or you either give it nothing, or you give it a current and a max. So we want the current and max to be the same. So that's why we got to pass it this HP twice. And there we go. That should set up our monster for some base cases. And of course, we want to design this get min. We'll do the same thing. Hover over it, hit Alt Enter, and make it return min damage. And we might do these a different way. Yeah, no, I'll think about it here. But 
basically, yeah, that's of course going to be max damage. As you can see, we don't need to put no discard in here twice. Did I do that with other stuff where it wasn't needed? I might have. Yeah, I guess you don't need the no discard in the CPP file, only in the header. Uh, I wasn't real sure on that, but it appears that when you use the auto create function, it doesn't bring it over. It does bring over a constant and no accept. Speaking of, these should also be const, const, because we don't want to be changing these values uh, as we bring them in, const, const, or as we get them. Now, another thing we probably want here, and this is where some randomization comes in, is we probably want an attack method. And we probably want this for the, both the character and the monster, because we're going to have them fight. But you know, as you might expect, when we do an attack, since we don't just have a flat damage amount, we want to randomize between min and max. This is optional. Some games just do a flat amount. You know, you add your modifiers of strength and whatever. But we're going to do a little bit of random damage because we have a min and a max, and that's kind of the point of it, is to random between those numbers. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Mainly, we're gonna use chrono and random. Now, I've already built this a million times, uh, so I'm not gonna do it again. Basically, if you go on over to GitHub, uh, I'm just gonna find myself, and I'm just gonna dig and look for a random. Where did I put this? Somewhere in here, I have random. There it is, Rand. Now, all this is is just some some really basic, if you look at the dot .h, I'll leave a link to this down below. Oh, this is a DLL version. But basically, it just has some little random functions, and you can see how they're built in this dot .cpp. Um, this is like 0 to 1 random float, 0 to 1 random. There's all different types, like this one is a, I think it's a, double yeah this one's a float this one's a double uh this one is zero or one random this is n to k random uh integers floats doubles we only need this integer one really so i'm just going to grab this code right here copy it that's the n to k r that's uh basically n to k whatever two numbers you give it and r stands for random and we're just going to make a little little file here. Actually, we'll make a, a CPP file called random. And that should go on the root level. Oops, I kind of want it to be lowercase, actually. There we go. And we're just going to put this function in here. And it's going to be a little confused about a few things, like it doesn't know what stuff is. So let's just fix that. So we're going to include what are we going to need? Chrono, because we are getting a time seed based on the current time of your computer. That way it's different random every time because it's going to be a different seed every time you use it. That way our program is not predictably random and you can't say, oh, if you do this thing first thing in the game, then it's always this value. It's not going to happen since it's going to seed on time and time's always different. And we need some other stuff here. I believe this is going to be, uh, I gotta look actually, what is it? Random and Chrono, okay. It's random. So that's all you need here. And basically you're gonna pass this, these two values and uh, it should work. Now let's just see what happens if we pass this UN32T. Let's see if we can fix it up a little bit and just see what happens here. And we're gonna give it a, okay, the seed's already UN32. The distribution type, it should work. Uh, and the standard MT is Mersin Twister. So we're using Mersin Twister. So since these are also static, they only happen once anytime you call the function and that's intended. We also want this to be no discard because why are you calling random if you're not using the value it returns? We also want this to be uh, const, well, const doesn't matter, it's not a class. Well, we can probably make it a class, or actually, let's just make it a namespace. You could make it a class, but we're going to make it namespace random. Because we're also going to make this static. And over here, let's see, what do we want? We probably just want no accept, so it can't throw exceptions. So random is not very well testable in general, because the problem with random is uh, if you run something like Valgrind to do memory checks, 
to see if anything's leaking. If you have if you have this kind of function somewhere in your code, Valgrind is not going to be able to tell because this is not an easily testable library. Uh, just throwing that out there so you're aware. But that's something some people run to when I hit my key. All right, so there we go. Now to call this, we're going to have to grab it with Xturn. Uh, we probably do want to grab to just put a header of it after all. Let's just do it. New item. Uh, random.h and it's going to be essentially the same code except now we're just going to have this random.h uh, we're just going to have this code here that way we can use it from whoever includes the library back in the namespace standard and there we go. Now it knows about it. So we just got to remember this function name and that it's in random. Actually, I'm going to take this car off, uh, the R off of there because we're already in namespace random. That's going to specify it enough, I think. Let's go back down here. Take this R off. And we know that we don't need this node discard. And uh, back in the dot H. So let's just make sure this is actually static. Like so. All right. Very good. So now let's go back into monster or monster.h and let's just let's just go uh, let's return a uint or let's return a damage type. What is damage type? Damage type is a uint32. Okay, that's fine. So we should probably use that everywhere. Uh, attack. If we call git attack or just attack, it's gonna return. Uh, let's make this no const no accept because it's not changing anything. And it returns damage type, which we want to be no discard. And we also want it to be const. We might not even use these get min, get max, because we can just call this attack. Or maybe, well, you know, we gotta decide. Melee attack. Maybe we do melee range. Now let's, let's keep it let's keep it really simple. We're not gonna worry about that. So let's build this attack function. Uh, so let's go into the actual .cp file here. And basically what we want to do is we want to include our random. Random .h. This should be lowercase. And we want to make sure that this uses into, that into k. So let's go scope it into random, into k, pass it the min damage, and max damage. And now... Uh, let's go back into random real quick. We probably want these uints to be damage type if we think about it because, well, I guess, you know, we might need separate random functions for other kinds of stuff, but this one will work for the damage. So maybe it'd be better if we did some sort of template for this so we could pass it different values easier. Uh, we're not going to worry about it right now. It's damage only. It's going to work fine. Let's just build it. It's going to return a random value using min and max. So whatever the min and max should are, it should be at least the min, no higher than the max. Now we could sort of test that. Uh, but we also want to build this attack, the same function, into the player. So let's go to player character and let's see, where do we hold our min and max damage? Nowhere. That's basically based on their equipped weapons and armor. So I guess it makes sense to put it into put the delegate here or into the uh, instantiation of player character which takes a PC class but yeah let's just put it that right there uh, same function uh, we want melee and range though here because we can equip melee or ranged melee attack and let's go ranged attack and let's just build these real quick and we'll test them here in a second they're essentially going to be the same Let's just make this real file. Let's go all the way up to the top. And we're now going to include random. Because we're going to need to random some damage here. Alright, well, we need to consider a few things. What's a melee attack do if you're if you don't have anything equipped? So we probably want to do uh, get equipped at, right? And then um, decide how it's going to work from there. So let's just do that. Uh, let's just, uh, anytime you call melee attack, let's instantiate a new damage. Well, temp uh, damage done. All right, let's just start this at zero. 
should be damage type, not just damage. All right, because we're going to return whatever this value does, but we're going to work with a little bit. So we're going to return temp damage. I could spell. There we go. Just, so if nothing ends up happening, it's going to return zero. But in general, we want to go. So if you have a melee weapon, equipped weapon at. Uh, let's just do a null check here. If get equipped weapon at, uh, we've got to cast it to an unsigned long, long, unsigned, long, long. And it's got to be this equipped at that slot. So it's going to be a weapon slot melee. So if this returns true, then they are, if this, re yeah, if this is true, that means they do have an equipped weapon. If it's false, they don't have an equipped weapon. So that's something we have to, to think about. Now, we probably only want to do this get equipped once. So let's actually bring it outside of this and just go uh, melee weapon. Let's go, I guess we could just do, you know, we'll, we'll just do a cast here. Const. Um, weapon pointer, oh, capitalize weapon, weapon pointer, temp weapon, or maybe we just call this equipped weapon. So we are creating a pointer and we're just going to see if this exists or not. So this does return a const weapon. So that's why this has got to be const as well. And we'll just do get equipped at same code as before. And then we can just check if this is null or not. If equipped weapon, then temp damage done is going to equal uh, random and decay. And we need to get the min damage of that weapon. Equipped weapon, min damage. Equipped weapon, max damage. Very good. So we're going to get a random value between the min and max of that melee. Else, like, uh, what are the, what's the unarmed damage? We'll just say temp damage done equals one unarmed attack. All right. And now we probably want to modify this with some, some strength or something. So we can go ahead and do that. So let's just add like maybe, well, we got to decide on a formula, maybe half our strength or a quarter of our strength is bonus damage. We'll just do that. Uh, add one quarter of strength and bonus melee damage, because why not? So we'll just take whatever that value ended up being, temp damage done, plus equals get, uh, let's see, we have it somewhere up here. We're just gonna take the PC class stat. Yeah, let's just do it directly. No, actually, you know, we want the total. So if we look at all these class values here, we want to get total strength because things could be modifying it. So we want to get, you know, all the bonus strength from armor and weapons and magical items and stuff. So we're just going to use that function to get total strength and just divide it by four and we'll cast whatever that ends up being into damage type and that should handle the rounding for us and there we go so yeah that should make sense to you get total strength divided by four add that to the damage and boom we got us a nice little melee attack that that does some random or if you got uh, min and max damage and if you're unarmed it's just one plus your strength and we're looking pretty good there. Or maybe we could even say zero plus your strength, because maybe your maybe your attack does no damage at all if you're really weak. Yeah, I like that better. So we're setting it equal to zero again when it's already zero. That's kind of redundant. Let's just go like this. Or actually, we don't even need this else case. And we can just say... Um, yeah, we'll just put some code here or some comments. If weapon exists, get the damage, else the damage, the uh, base damage stays zero. Okay. Yeah, that works well enough. And we want to do essentially the same thing for a melee attack. So let's just go ahead, or a ranged attack rather. 
but we'll use agility or something. I don't know. We got to decide, but it's essentially going to be this same code. Uh, but you know, to to for, to have a ranged attack, you sort of need to actually have a ranged weapon. You can't you can't just have an attack without one. So maybe we don't want to add any bonus damage to this. So it could just be zero. Yeah, I guess if you do a ranged attack, yeah, we'll just make it zero. I mean, that's kind of silly because. It's still gonna like technically let you call the function. It's just gonna return zero damage. So I don't know. We might have to work with that in our battle system a little bit, but that should work for now. Uh, no bonus damage on there. Or we could just say, now let's do bonus damage. Let's do get total agility this time. But we're gonna make this a little bit differently because uh, you actually have to have a ranged weapon. If equipped weapon, then increase the damage by yeah, whatever your agility is. So you'll get some bonus damage based on your agility on this one. Maybe it should be strength because you could pull back your bow harder or whatever, but eh, we're not gonna worry about it. We're just we're just gonna get it done. Uh, and we'll just call this order of agi as bonus range damage. So there we go. Yep, it's gonna stay zero if you don't have an equipped weapon. And now, since we're doing this check twice, we can actually just put this code right here. It makes a little more sense. Let's comment right here. There we go. We actually have to have that weapon equipped to get any damage and the bonus. If you have nothing, it's just going to return zero, and you do zero damage with ranged attack, which is fine, because it essentially will do nothing, as expected. You just can't do it. I guess you could still do it, you know, you just like go, huh. I threw something at you. Pretend. Zero damage. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so, we don't want to overthink it, I guess is the point. Let's just close that out. And with the monster, we're not even going to worry about ranged attacks right now. Let's just keep it more simple. Uh, we're probably going to inherit from this and do special stuff later. But we're, we'll worry about that when the time comes. So now we can make attacks, we can take damage, and we can do all sorts of stuff like that between the monster and players so we can actually make them battle now. But let's make a few new tests real quick for these new functions we added. Well, let's go ahead and make a test that is basically a little pseudo battle, but also we just want to do some damage tests as well. So let's go back to our test class here and let's go, to, I guess we can do it, put it anywhere, but let's just go all the way to the bottom and just go test method and we'll just call it and just monster for now and we want to just test setting up a new monster and confirm that it works right basically so monster one we can call it whatever and we need to construct it with some hp and stuff so maybe it has a uh, 10 hp min damage of two max damage of four and that's all we need to know about it but of course we need to include monster otherwise it's not going to know what it is Naturally, we're just doing it on that PCH. It's fine. All right, so now let's just let's just make some assertions. So let's assert that it has ten hit points. Is equal, or uh, are equal rather, are equal ten and uh, monster one dot HP dot get max or get current. Go ahead and cast that to an int so it can know what to do with it. And we should find out that that's okay. Wise Visual Studio underlining it and complaining beats me. It just does that. Okay, so it looks like we have a few complaints here. This whole no accept, it doesn't like no accept because we didn't define it. Is that right? Uh, monster. Okay, so let's just dig into this. It's saying static function. No except declared but not defined. See, okay, so we have some differences here. We have no except on uh, this version, but do we have it on the one where we actually, yeah, it's here. What are we talking about? It's possible that we can't use no except here because sometimes if you're, well, if you're writing a no except function 
and you're calling functions that can throw exceptions, it's not valid because it's not no except if you're calling other things that can throw exceptions. So let's just take it off of there and see if that fixes the issue. Maybe it's something else. It still says declare but not defined. What? So we must have spelled something wrong is all I can assume here. Looks the same to me. Well, let's just try commenting this out and then just let it create it itself. Okay, and then we'll put all this code in here, uncomment it, and see if it's happy now. Well, I guess it just doesn't like the fact that this is static. Let's take the static off. Still not too happy about it. Why are you no happy? Oh, UN32 is undefined. Okay, so we just need to include C standard and so that's probably the actual problem. Yeah, we do want this to be static. Okay, and we're just running into another issue. It looks like this one might be a little different. Does it also want static here? I don't know. Apparently the static is it's not okay there. I guess it's fine. We still have the main variables in here static, so that's fine. And now it's just complaining about our monster code. Well, let's have a dig into that and see what the problem is. Looks fine there. Uh, I don't think this attack can be no except because it uses random, basically. That's probably going to cause some issues. So let's go check that out. Take off this no except. Hit build again. See if it's happy. It says we're missing a semicolon before. That is not true at all. We have all the semicolons we need. So what is really going on? Just doesn't like instantiating. Oh, it's because we can't call this monster. It's it's a uh, already a taken name. So let's just call this enemy monster. Yeah, sure, whatever. Now we should be able to do some more stuff. Does not have overloaded operator. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is not a unique pointer. It's just an actual variable. There we go. And now we should be able to run our test. And let's just see that. The monster has its basic stuff sorted out. Run. Yep, seems to get the proper HP. We also want to just assert that the damage is 2 and 4. Get min damage. Oh, not from HP. Get min damage. And basically just, you know, confirm that our, our basics are right. That's typically what you want to do in a test. Go ahead and run that test again. We don't need to run them all. We already know the others pass. So we'll just run this one, make sure it passes. And now we can do some stuff with the attack. So how do we want to do this? We know that the attack should be between min and max. So what if we go assert to have a less than? No. Let's just look through all these and see if we got. No, we don't really have a less than. So random is kind of hard to test because, well, we could just use something like is true uh, over and over. So, for example, let's make a for loop. Uh, whatever, we'll use the variable i. Start at zero and just uh, what do we want to go to? I don't know. How many times do we want to test the randomization? Let's just say, well, i is less than 100. That's a lot of times. We'll probably make it less. And then, you know, iterate through i. And, uh, let's just do something like this we'll just do get damage a bunch of times so let's make a variable we'll instantiate it up here so we don't keep recreating it and we'll just say int damage rando yeah sure start at zero and just go damage rando equals monster one dot get attack or attack rather and it should do between two and four damage over and over. Why doesn't it like this? I don't like I for some reason. I don't know. It'll be fine. Oh, we're using a little typo here. Okay, so we want to determine that this, that something here is true. So we need a case here. Uh, let's just say 
it's less than five. So let's go damage rando less than five. We want to assert that that's true every time. And we also want to assert that it's greater than two. So we'll just go through this a hundred times, get the random damage or, or greater than one rather. And just basically, this is just going to assert that it's between two and four every single time. So let's go ahead and run this. So, you know, a hundred iterations of getting that attack should be pretty solid little check. And we could even take it a step further and make it modular and say it should be less than the max damage, or I guess we could use less than equal, less than or equal to the max damage and greater than equal to the min damage. Kind of a heavy function, but that should make it so that it doesn't matter what we change these to. Like if we do between, between 10 and I don't know, 40, for example, we should be able to uh, adjust accordingly. And since we're using get min, get max, it should work. And maybe we want to go through this a thousand times, but you're starting to see the point here. We basically want to test that all the random is working correctly. This should have no chance of failing. It does fail. What happened here? Expected 40. Oh, I got these backwards. I'm saying get min multiple times, get max. And you got that. It should be get max. Okay, now it shouldn't fail. So very good. We caught an error based on our typo and it failed again. Why did it fail this time? We got these backwards. This one should be max. This one should be min. All right. And let's, let's just flip that order. Makes more sense to me. Very good. Our tests are doing what they're supposed to do. They're calling out our mistakes and now it succeeds. I went through this a thousand times, randomized damage, and it was fine every time. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So we can pretty well assume, yeah, we don't need this many tests. That's excessive. Let's stick with lower numbers here, but you get the point. This should, uh, this should definitely fail sometimes and assert doesn't have a less than or greater than. So that's why we have to do it in this loopy way. There's no less than I think, you know, some test formats do, or maybe it has, is it is less? No, it just doesn't have, it just doesn't have that assert. That's fine. We can just do it in this sort of way with uh, the check right in there and make sure it's true or false as expected. And now let's try to battle. Uh, let's call this uh, simple battle. Uh, but before we make this method, we did write a new thing in the characters. So we want to test in any of these characters that the, uh, you know, the attack actually works. I guess maybe that'll, that'll be in the simple battle. So what if we just take something to find, yeah, we got a full suite of equipping and everything. What if we just take like one of these, I don't know, let's take our rogue here. Let's just take a plain old rogue. We'll give him a weapon. Uh, let's see, what do we give him up, up here? Let's equip this dagger to the rogue. All right, I'm just kind of doing some quick, quick hacks here. Uh, let's rename this here to rogue. There we go. So we equip the weapon, a dagger does one to three melee damage and let's just make it fight with a monster. So let's make this same monster. All right. And we can just make them battle. Now the test, if we use randomization on the damage, it's going to be up in the air, but the majority of the time, the monster should win because, well, the rogue's level one and level one has less hit points than the monster and his damage is less. So the monster should in theory win most of the time. That's going to be hard to test because it's, it's not something that's going to be always true or always false. But basically what we can do is go while, uh, monster one dot get or HP dot get current. You know, we're just making a pseudo battle system. We don't have a true battle system, but let's just make them attack each other and reduce each other's HP. Basically, uh, we can, we can at least assert that that sort of thing can work in a loop and then we can design a battle system based on those sort of things. But you know, no AI or anything. Uh, we could maybe put a little one here, but it'd get really complicated. All right. 
assume, okay, assert that monster's HP is greater than zero and rogue dot, well, what are we gonna do, get current HP, I think, do we have that function? The dot HP, wherever I put it, I don't, I don't remember the function name, but if we go look at this player character, we should see, what do we got? We got get current HP, all right, that's fine. Get current HP is greater than zero. So basically, while both of them have more than zero HP, they're both still alive, we make it attack each other and see who comes out on top. So let's just go. Uh, this kind of brings up the need for like an event queue so we can make them happen at the same time, but we're just going to hack it. We'll just go like monster one dot HP dot reduce current. Or, yeah, we got to do it like this. Is it reduce? What do we name this function? Let's go to here. Yeah, it's reduce current. This uh, autocorrect is is just not helping at all. It's just flat out failing to assist. So usually you get some autocorrect popping up here. But if you don't, you just have to remember your function names. Kind of defeats the purpose of the autocorrect if it doesn't actually work. And we want to reduce the current by the rogue's attack. Melee attack, basically. Uh, melee attack. And then we want to do the same thing for the rogue. Rogue dot... Oh, what do we have? I think we have take damage in this case. Yeah. We'll just go monster one dot attack. So they both take damage. And they both are going to just get hit by each other's melee attacks. And basically until one or both of them have zero HP left. And there's no great way to assert this other than we could do, I guess we could assert is true. Oh, well, that one of them has uh, zero hit points, basically. So we'll just make this funky looking thing. We'll just sand them together. Uh, this one, not hand. We want to or them together. So either the monster's current should be zero or the rogue's current should be zero. So one of these has to be true. All right, we can just assert that in a simple battle here. And uh, we could even run this battle multiple times if we want. But in general, this should pass. So let's hit run all tests so that it builds our new test. Look for simple battle to pop up. There it is. It does fail. Uh, let's see, why does it fail? It's failing on this equip, apparently. What am I missing here? Weapon slot. Cast to item. Calling cast to armor. Why are we casting it to armor? All right. Well, uh, this is a null reference, I think. Okay, we're doing it on this melee attack. Get equipped weapon at. So maybe we need to walk through this a little bit and see where it's going wrong. But I think we messed up one of our attack functions. Potentially this one. See, that's range. That should be fine. That's melee. That should be fine. Get equipped weapon. Get equipped weapon. Yeah, so let's go back to our little simple battle. Let's just put a breakpoint like right here. And maybe here. And we can right click, go to debug, and just walk through it. See what's happening. See where we're getting this failure. All right, so let's uh, step over that one. That's fine. Creating the item works fine. Uh, creating the monster works fine. Now let's, di let's dive into this wild loop. So let's go right here. There we go. We're doing the, the rogue's melee attack. Let's see what's going wrong here. We go to get equipped weapon. It jumps up here and just checks that this exists. Gets the data, turns that const pointer. Uh, maybe we don't want these final. Well, this shouldn't affect it, but. Get weapon at, okay. Gets the weapon. 
goes through this random. Let's make sure these are actually the values we expect. One and three. Yep. Looks good. Looks good. And then we're adding our strength. And here's where we're having an issue. It's because, all right, we're checking an armor slot that has nothing. So this is actually a problem somewhere else. We should have checked this earlier in a test because what if you, the one you're passing in, this in item, what if this is null? We, we don't have that check going on here. So it's a, uh, it's trying to dereference some null stuff and that's, that doesn't work obviously. So basically what we want to do here is have a null check. If n, if not n, basically, uh, we just want to return. And we probably want to do that in all of these. And we should have a test that checks this somewhere else, right? But let's just go ahead and hot fix it like so. And Visual Studio is having a mind of its own and doing something, whatever, you thing. We just don't want to do the cast if this n is not, is null. So this is just a null check. Uh, let's run that again. Let's see if it now is okay. Yeah, and it now passes. Let's run it in the debug so we can step into it if we want. Uh, so we know, know this one's fine. Oh, let's uh, get out of that. Get over that. Yeah, we have to skip over those current checks. All right, so this melee attack was actually fine. It was the part where we were totaling up let's see let's get to it here random's fine it was this get total strength because it was it checks every armor slot right it goes through every single armor slot goes through every single weapon slot if some of those are null it was failing the cast but not just a normal fail it was failing because it was going into this function here and then trying to take a null pointer and dereference it or uh, get the data out of a null pointer and yeah that whole dynamic cast was epic failing so good catch there another reason we write tests now in theory so we know this works fine now we can just continue and let it do its thing uh we do want to stop here though let's let's continue to the end let's see who lost so get current this uh the monster has seven hp left the rogue we go look at his hp we should be able to find it here somewhere under player class i think hp his current is zero so he just got slapped around uh Monster only went down to seven. Rogue only went down to zero. So Rogue stood no chance. Even though he did have, looked like he had 12 hit points. Is that right? Let's check the Rogue. Do we have him starting out with? Yeah, even though he had more hit points, he just did on an average so much less damage that uh, he had no chance. So a little, little imbalanced maybe, but it gets the job done and you can see the point here. We can now basically have the battle. We have the core of a battle system worked out, although this is way too simple to really use in a game. I mean, sure we could, we could just, you know, have them go back and forth. But in reality, you want to be able to use your actions and anytime it's your turn, you want to be able to pick your abilities and stuff. So that's a whole nother thing we have to design, but we do at least have a base monster system in here of monsters we could create at will to battle. So, uh, we'll have to manage that going forward and we'll have to consider what they drop, but this is probably just going to be more of a base class in the end. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of design decisions to make here on this whole monster thing. Like we could, in theory, we could even just say, Hey, just make the monster basically another player character. We could turn this into just like a living being delegate or something, you know, and we could do that with control RR and go living being delegate. And we could make this all the base stuff for every living thing. However, we don't necessarily want every living thing to have levels and experience. So that's why I'm not going to do that. But it kind of does make sense that they should be able to get buffs and things like that. So more design decisions that we're probably going to ignore. And we're just going to leave monsters a whole separate thing. Because there's going to be the, you know, the four player character classes. And then things you can battle against. And uh, yeah, we still got five more episodes after this to go let me know what you want to see next and maybe we'll actually do it in the next few episodes because we have to start finalizing some things here all right thanks for watching peace out